So if we come over here a bit, so you don't go... If we the go signets way, um, so part in Act well. 2 is so famous, basically, because of the music. It's such a wonderful tune. I think so. Isn't it all like that? I think if uh, you asked anybody... Um, about Swan Lake, this is the thing they probably would remember. I know as a girl myself, you always practice the moves, and so um, they're going to try a couple of steps. And so it's that move where you go. Do you know the signets? It's so unusual to have four dancers kind of linked together and that they don't become unlinked until the last beat of the music. It's very, very important to start this at exactly the right tempo, too fast and the dancers are not able to, to get into the positions. If it has to be so perfect so that it doesn't look funny, because if a girl does a head wrong or something, then the audience spot it straight away. This is the bassoons. This is woodwind. Isn't it? It's very, it's done in a very, very beautiful way. It's very elegant. Now look down when you do the trombe. Down. Right. Perfect. And you know what bit comes next? It's. And chefe, chefe. That's it. See? These girls know it. It's amazing. <laughs> The origins of Swan Lake are shrouded in mystery. There are many theories as to where the story came from, and some people think Tchaikovsky himself put the story together. Tchaikovsky wrote the first version of Swan Lake for his nieces and nephews when they were little children one summer when he was visiting them. I think it was about 1870. And apparently they had little wooden swans that they rode on in the house. and. Um, Perhaps that's what inspired him. In some ways, Swan Lake is rooted in the romantic ballet of the first half of the 19th century, where the stages were full of stories about heroes like Siegfried. The actual story of swans, however, is, that's got a much stranger and wider history. Swans are a symbol of innocence and purity, and Tchaikovsky may have come across fairy tales about them during his travels around Europe. Northern mythology is full of stories about swans. So although Swan Lake was not a single fairy tale, it did draw on lots of familiar tales, lots of familiar sources. Swan Lake's an amazing story because it's a fairy tale for grown-ups. Since children are prepared for adult life through fairy tales, I think that any fairy tale for grown-ups is very instructive and children understand it. It's clear what's good and what's evil. Children love magic. And I have to say as an adult, I love magic too and I'm a great fan of Harry Potter and Narnia and books like that. And I think that Swan Lake does share some of these elements because there is this tremendous force of evil in the background that's ready to pounce at any moment. The theme of good and evil is portrayed in the story by the two swans who are danced by the same ballerina. For the audience, their different characters are revealed through the clever choreography. Marius Petabar choreographed the palace scenes and Lev Ivanov did the lakeside scenes. I don't think they realized how clever they were being in showing the contrast between how Odette and Odile um, have these different characters and how they're trying to catch this one prince. <laughs> <laughs> Swan Lake is one of the most challenging ballets in our classical repertoire. It has every step we do in class. Everything we work for is in this ballet. The jumps, the beats, the turns. I don't think there's anything actually missing from this piece. And you have to do four acts of it as well, three hours long. It's very demanding. For the 
for the ballerina in particular, it is the most challenging role, Odette Odile, because she does have to dance in two completely different styles. Odile's style is flashy and seductive, and Odette's is lyrical and romantic. This is one beautiful part in the Act Two, Pas de where Odette's getting more familiar with the prince, but she's still very nervous. Even though she has the mannerisms of being a swan in this pas de deux, she is all woman, but constantly she's worrying about Rothbart going to appear any time. What makes this part quite difficult is that basically the back and the leg have to reach the same position at the same time in the music. So as I'm bending back and as the foot goes down, they have to reach together, and that's what I'm trying to perfect. And then, of course, what's very difficult for the guy, because he's only got me in one arm, that he's going to bring me up just like that with one arm. And he has to do it very controlled, only in one arm, and just catch it at the end, which is not easy. <laughs> We try and make it look very easy, but it's not easy. In contrast, Odile's style is flamboyant and athletic. So much of Tchaikovsky's music um, does wonderful things for a dancer because it does encourage you to move faster, it propels you and moves you into those moves. In Odile's solo, the very last step is very sharp and clean and is a wonderful impact to the end of the solo. And you can see why it's so difficult, because she has to do that after everything else. <laughs> and the nice thing is to keep it really fast. Um, the difficult thing when you're tired, to be fast, it's always harder. <laughs>